Welcome to Finding Certainty with your host and U.S. Army veteran, Patrick Lang. Over the next hour, you'll learn from Patrick and his expert guests how to attract more certainty into your business and your life. Now, here is your host, Patrick Lang. Welcome to Finding Certainty. Appreciate you being with us this morning. Uh, Very excited about uh, today's guest. I refer to him as a renaissance man of business and finance because it's really what he is. And as you hear Tony's story this morning, uh, I think you'll be impressed. I think you'll agree. So we're meeting with Anthony Salazar, Tony uh, T-Money Salazar, as he's known. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He is a, uh, a serial entrepreneur, a founder and CEO of uh, Maybill Academy, environmental responsible uh, company, which uh, ERC Nevada, as it's known, and uh, a, really a foremost expert in cryptocurrency and blockchain. So we're going to be getting into some of that today. If you have any interest in crypto, how to uh, prepare for it, profit from it, protect yourself, uh, the list goes on. You'll be uh, very interested in today's conversation. We're sitting here with one of the well, one of the experts. Thank, thank you, Patrick, for having me here. I, I, I really uh, enjoy your show. So uh, it's just exciting to, you know, give out some information. You know, a little bit about myself. Uh, my journey started as uh, when I was in college. I I was a banker. I was a teller just like any, any, anybody else, you know, started from the ground level. And then I really started getting into the operations parts of banks, mainly ATMs, you know, fill, fulfilling the ATMs, fixing them, uh, programming them, placing them. And these, those were, that's what my, in my twenties. And, you know, I, I was doing credit card processing, that kind of thing. And once you understood how the network of banking and finance really works, I started to ask a lot of questions, you know, how our money is, you know, works like, you know, you kind of see the Wizard of Oz and you kind of see the levers uh, behind the the curtain and you're like, wow, this is, um, I mean, it's kind of volatile. It's really not, you know, certain. And however, the system, you have these big institutions uh, that tout that they're, you know, pretty solid and, you know, they're trustworthy and they market themselves that, that way. But behind the scenes, they're, they're pretty, uh, it, it, they're pretty volatile. And I think you can kind of see that today with SVB and some of the, uh, these regional banks going under mm-hmm. or, you know, going into receivership through the FDIC. So there's that, you know, well, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting because you think of it as you know FDIC insured, and that means that my money is safe and uh, and so forth. But it is precarious, uh, especially as things change globally. As there are there are everything from terrorist th- threats to global pandemics to uh, um, the changes with blockchain and so forth and so on. And and in many sense, blockchain is making it more secure, which we're going to get into. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. I'm starting to. I'm. A, I still consider myself a blockchain novice, but I think I know more than a, a lot of people because I've been dabbling in it for the last few years. But really looking forward to hearing, uh, hearing that and getting into that topic with you. So, uh, thank you. And uh, you know where, you know what I do and my, I guess my mission and passion was education, and really telling people and educating them on how money works uh you know true so you can pretty much so you can be certain (laughs) no pun intended (laughs) but about your future your your legacy that you can leave behind uh you know as an insurance as well you know life insurance and that kind of thing so estate planning so as a business owner really the reason why most people get in a business is because they want to leave something they want to make something out of themselves, right? They want to leave something behind that's a legacy, maybe a name brand, right? Um, think about the big corporations that you have today. They started with an idea back, you know, maybe 100 years ago or 50 years ago or even 10 years ago. And now they're name brands that everybody knows and use. And it was started with an idea. And that idea 
you know, could be, and it takes a lot of hard work and, and maybe, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs like myself and business owners that I've coached throughout the time and May, uh, Maybell Academy is an entrepreneur academy. Uh, one of the things that education, you know, in our, uh, in like elementary school and high school, even college and universities, they don't teach entrepreneurship at all. So I had to kind of like the hard knocks, school of hard knocks <laughs> to do like learn what to do and not to do. And, you know, he, doing business here in the United States is not it's not the same as doing business in Canada or, or Mexico or, or another country, you know, you kind of, you know, everybody has their own laws, even other states. Um, so you kind of have to get guidance all the time. <clears throat> and that's what Maybill is all stands for. I have, it's, it's five pillars. It's actually an acronym, M-A-B-I-L. And it's all about, you know, your mentorship, getting a mentor to in the field that you want to build. Uh, A stands for accounting, B stands for banking, I stands for insurance, and L stands for legal. So those are the five pillars to build a successful business because, you know, you want to be risk managing, you know, with insurance and knowing where your money is going and being certain when you make a decision on your business, you have a picture of what your financials are at all time. And now that with the invent of computing, um, you know, that now it's just a click of a button with a book, you know, QuickBooks or Peachtree or any of those softwares that you can use. And it's getting easier and easier for people to, to really get organized, right? Um, and I encourage that. I encourage that everybody understands their financial, I call it the financial career. And, um, you know, I know I'm going to, talk about Robert Kiyosaki, uh, his EB, you know, his quadrant, it's called, and I kind of take that, but, and I take it to a next level, uh, because everybody, just like in life, you have four stages in your life, right? Um, you have your childhood, you have your teenage years where you kind of rebel, then you're an adult, and you're mature, and you start making your own family, and then, then you get into the empty nester golden years right where you retire or right so those are the four stages of life that's natural it's a natural progression of the universe of your life mm -hmm. and so if people plan that way and they say even financially like when your children are born you know you can start planning then like right in their their formidable years so that they can you know educate them on how to use money what is the benefit is uh, you know of money what is uh what is the difference between currency and money which is most people don't understand that what's the difference between money and capital it's there is an actual difference and uh, most people actually use those terminologies um as mm -hmm. money which is not the truth there's, there's a, definitely a difference in that so you know, having solutions for them to pretty much put them in an, uh, I mean, that's what I think everybody, every parent wants, right, is to have, uh, to leave something behind. Mm -hmm. And not only that, to grow their, their um, legacy after they're done, right, in this world, and have that satisfaction that, um, you know, they built something in your lifetime, you know, we, we only have I mean, if you, if God willing, gives you 100 to maybe 120 years, maybe in that range, I mean, God willing. And so if you plan that way, um, you know, you have a plan to succeed and not a plan to fail. So if you teach the, your, your, your young ones, your, your children from an early age, how to have entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship um, you know, same thing. Uh, I remember like myself, me in my journey, I started as an employee, right? So same thing, em your employees are your children. Uh, they, they are, they, you got to tell them when to check in, when to check out, when to go to the bathroom, you know, you got to put a list of rules in place so that, you know, there's no shenanigans going on. Um, and then you, you have these, your vendors, your 1099ers, right? 
uh, per se. And they're like your teenagers, right? They, you can't really tell them what to do because they're not part of the organization, but they're part of your organization independently. And so you have to even put rules, just like in a household, you put rules in place to um, have a, a better, you know, a better organization. So then you being an adult or a, a business owner, because an entrepreneur and being a business owner is very different mindset. So, um, and having that system in place to pretty much have a successful business. And all of your fi Fortune 500 companies, they, they have, they're, you know, corporate, they have those, uh, just like a family, you have rules of your household, right? And there's people that, you know, don't adhere to the rules and sometimes you got to fire them. And you have to come to terms with that and how to discipline and your employees, just like you have disciplined your, your children. And of course, the last stage, or if you have that parallel that I'm talking about, is you become an investor. And that's kind of like your retirement or your golden age. And you become actually intradependent with your family. Right. So if you notice how in your older years, uh, in your golden years, you know, the grandpa is always interdependent. You know, they're they're outside of the scope of your, you know, they really don't have any liability anymore in your household, but definitely they they depend on you to be there and having that that connection. So right, but they um, also have years of experience and you look at them as a mentor and as a as a sounding board and so forth and so on. So let me interject real quick because sure. I always start the show out by explaining two reasons why I've invited you as a guest. And for the first in Tony's case is, as you hear him talk, he has a wealth of uh, knowledge and experience, a lot of it financial related. And I wanted to have him on our show. One, he's the first guest I've had that specializes in crypto or is an expert in crypto. It's a topic we've wanted to, to discuss, but... But um, I refer to him as a renaissance man because he's had so much different experience in so many different ways, so many different arenas and some really interesting stories and experiences that um, he draws from that experience and his insights into business and into life are really fascinating. And secondly, he's constantly forward looking. What's the next trend coming? What's the, where's the next need? Where's the next risk? He's constantly risk assessing and uh, and exploring opportunity. And that's what Mabel Academy does uh, to a large extent. It helps helps businesses and entrepreneurs do exactly that. Look at their business, look at the trends, look at where they're weak, look at where they could be stronger and establish more certainty in their businesses. And so um, tell us a little bit about your, before we get into to more of the philosophy and the insights, uh, tell us a little bit more about your past. So, uh, tell us some of the things, you know, where you're from and some of the things you've done. Sure. I'm, I, I live here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I grew up here in Las Vegas, um, long time begging. Um, Las Vegas is a very eclectic place to live. It's very international. So I, I met a lot of people from different backgrounds, different cultures, different languages. So I think that would gave me the diversity of that perspective, I guess, and 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 really understanding people and how they work. And one thing's that, and so through you know through banking as a teller, you know, I saw a lot of people, you know, making their deposits and so and so, and so I really interact with that. Then I did sales as well, you know, as a banker, you got to do sales, and you know, opening accounts and whatnot. And so people get really personal on their financials right and so uh a, a good banker will be their you know becomes your financial priest per se right. uh so when i was doing loans and mortgages and whatnot you know auto loans you know you ask a lot of questions about their background and who who they are and and so it, it just i just became very curious about how people made money and how their success maybe learn about their success as well and so like i said i'm a very curious person and i i really want to know how what makes people tick or even how things work and so 
I guess, you know, I was a tinker too, because I was a little bit technically savvy. You know, I went to school when I went to school at university. It was for information systems because I really love computers and, you know, the whole, like you said, forward thinking of what's life going to be like, right? So I remember like being a young man in, in my 90s, in, in the, in the ni 1990s, in seeing the internet born. And I thought it was, I mean, it was this big explosion. I, I saw the difference because when I was in high school, I had to go to the library and open up, a, crack open a book, right. right? I remember. Right. And so. I, uh, yeah. I distinctly <laughs> remember them talking about this thing called email. And yeah, now what's that? You know, I can, I have a, a clear memory of the day that I first heard about email. It's funny. Yeah, my, my first email was actually when I got to university and the university assigned me an email, right? They were going to communicate with me there. It's like, a, oh, that was easy. That's, that was wonderful. And as I, um, you know, got more technical and, you know, started understanding and I mean, I, I had, I was, went to a good school and that school really taught me the foundation of things, you know, how to think, how to think critically. So coming out of the, you know, college, I was, you know, I was working in the bank and going to college at the same time. And then coming out, then I did some sales, uh, sales training. That was actually the best college I ever had was sales training. Um, and then, um, you know, I came back, I, I went to university in, in California because they didn't have my major here in Vegas. But then I came back here to Vegas to be with the family again. And then, um, so, you know, I just transferred here to back to Vegas, you know, with the same company. And, you know, then I went to credit unions, uh, that whole thing and insurance and from insurance kind of led me down this rabbit hole. And then I got this entrepreneur bug and I started with me and my brother, we started a recycling company uh, it was called Liberty Salvage Materials and had that for 10 years or yeah, 10, 12 years, if I remember. And we sold the company actually and, uh, you know, for a profit and um, it was very cool. And uh, and we didn't start like as a, rec a recycling company. It was actually called CND Construction Services. And what we were doing, we were um, picking up the debris from, you know, we just got a truck, a dump truck started picking up the debris from the construction sites and have that kind of contract. And then we started seeing a lot of the construction debris that we were picking up was really good stuff, you know? I mean, it was <laughs> brand new stuff. It was lumber, metals, plastics, cardboard, you know, that was just uh, brand new. And we're like, well, instead of putting in a big hole, a trash, right? you know, what can we do? So we started getting really into other fields and it kind of, it was just a journey, you know? So that's why we started ERC of Nevada, which is more uh, helping companies, Fortune 500 companies go green, especially in 2008. And it was devastating 2008. And so we had to really pivot and really be, um, how to say, uh, I guess, entrepreneur. Re reinvent right? yourself. Yeah, and reinvent ourselves. So, well, we're uh, we're coming up on our uh, on a break here, and um, we're visiting with Tony Salazar. He's the founder and CEO of Maybill Academy, and um, I'm interested in hearing more of your transition into the ERC of Nevada, uh, envir environmental responsible. Is it company or corporation? Company. Yeah, company. Yeah. And so. Um, because that led you to some really interesting experiences with the city and the county and so forth and so on. So let's go to break. We're going to come back in just uh, a minute and uh, hear more of Tony's story. He's built and sold multiple companies, um, seen millions of dollars flow through his hands and uh, helped uh, some really extraordinary projects come to fruition. And now he's taking all of his experience and giving back and helping others learn and grow and benefit in the same way. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Finding Certainty. All clear. Great segment. Back in two. 
So I always, say, I always say whoever's on uh, YouTube gets the behind the scenes. So we're still recording. <laughs> I want to share the real meat, you know, what is the real project you're working on? Top secret. This is the chance. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, just uh, like my today, it's being that, you know, like you said, I, I made money. It's I'm not like, you know, multi, multi-millionaire or anything like that. But I'm really happy with my results and things that I, I just do things organically. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, like I said, my passion is education. So, you know, giving back my knowledge, right? Because I just think um, that's what's lacking, right? And, right. you know, I, I remember, you know, America was founded on entrepreneurship, right? that free yeah. enterprise, right? Totally. Bootstraps, right? And let's go Absolutely. out West and <laughs> conquer the world and that kind of thing. And the, and I think wild, wild West. Now, did you see the chat, the post I put in the chat? About? Are you watching the chat? I think this is the countdown. Huh? <laughs> Try to remember that. Yeah. It says pause. Yeah, let me interject. It is. It's supposed to be <laughs> that is not a speech. Got it. Yeah, no, I just I just get on this rambling, I guess. You do, <laughs> and it's uh it's good. I mean it's it's interesting information. But the uh um so so I think it's really interesting how your career has evolved. We can talk about this when we come back from break, but it's kind of built upon itself, right? Yeah, 20, one, 20 seconds. Thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, one thing built upon another. Yeah, he's even, coming back. Even, even in my other companies, yeah. So yeah, we'll wait for that. That's <laughs> good stuff. You are listening to Finding Certainty with Patrick Lang. Have a question for Patrick or his guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now, back to the show with Patrick. Well, you're listening to Finding Certainty. My uh, special guest this morning is Tony Salazar. Uh, he's a, a very successful entrepreneur here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and a lot of different things throughout his career. We were just getting into how you went from uh, working in the banking industry and learning all about money, and then you decided you wanted to be an entrepreneur and started a uh, really a recycling company. You started just picking up uh, trash from construction sites, realized there was a lot of good stuff in there, <laughs> yeah. and started recycling. And this evolved into you getting in, yeah. into the ERC of Nevada, which is really, it's a consulting firm, right? It was, it yeah. was a consulting so company focused on green, helping companies go green i mean fortune right type. so let me let me go back so my first company that i made it was called cnd construction services and it was to pick up debris from construction sites mainly residential so i had contracts with the big national builders like uh, party homes woodside homes well lennar homes and so you know Vegas was booming with construction and, you know, I saw the need and, you know, we started with one truck and, and we grew that company in six years, you know, from 2000 to 2006, actually seven, seven years, we grew the company pretty substantially big. We had at the end, we had 150 bins. We had three roll-off trucks. We had, you know, seven um, dump trucks. We had about 53 employees, mm. um, so it, it grew pretty big. And and we saw, because the things that we were picking up, the debris, there was, like I said, was pretty brand new. So we were like, well, we can recycle some of this, a lot of this stuff, you know, before recycling was trendy. You know, I saw this kind of trend going where everybody wants to go green. And I was like, well, we can start doing that. And so one of the first things that we did was we actually extracted, because 40% of our trash, instead of putting it in landfill, and, and actually, you know, our biggest expense, one of our biggest expense and CND construction services was our trash bill. So okay. I was like, well, how can I cut costs and make a whole other business doing that? So <laughs> we would take the lumber, because 40% of our trash was lumber. 
And so we started making products out of that lumber and it was called Starwood Lumber Products. And that was oh. another business. And then that led us to, well, a lot of people were like, wow, you're really innovative and, you know, had a good idea and we're making money in these two companies. And of course, we really pushed the new envelope and did Liberty Salvage Materials, which is a recycling company. And so now we had three companies and I'm, if you thought I was busy back then, I was even more busier. So mm -hmm. we kind of grew that way. And so we, so in 2008 happened, it was very devastating. Uh, and my banking buddies kind of started telling me, Hey, the, 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 uh, I, I remember going to seeing my mentors and so that's how mentors are so important in my life and should be for you too. Um, and one of them said, I remember try, wanting to, you know, get in the game because uh, the housing market was really hot. I mean, you could buy a house or, you know, buy a house and then you have like 40% equity in it uh, in a couple of months. And so everybody was getting on the bandwagon. And I remember I had a house. It was my personal home that I wanted to take out money out of it to buy another house and do rental properties. And he's like, no, don't do that. And I was like, what? It's like, wait a minute, no, but it's hot. Things are going. And he's like, no, actually sell your house. So I actually sold my house and I went into an apartment. <laughs> my brother, some of my people that I, that they're like, you're crazy, you're crazy. This was in 2006, by the way. And so, so I listened to my mentor and like a year later, of course, everything about a year or two later, years later, of course, everybody knows the crash and the housing market of the backle. And so we had a closed CND, CND construction, because it was all construction. Starwood lumber, we had to, you know, close that down and you know, fire people. And and it was just a part of life, you know, you have these ebbs and flows in in your right. life. And you got to just be very creative. And so we kind of reinvented ourselves. So we had right. the Liberty Salvage. And we already had a lot of equipment from CND and we just kind of consolidated everything and really started teaching people, how, you know, especially the, you know, 2008, most people, I don't know if you remember TARP, the TARP money, there was, it was a grant from uh, uh, one third of TARP money went to the Department of Energy. And there was this big push of going green in the Obama era. And so I really capitalized on that. And I already kind of saw it for already. And we were just in the right place in the right time. I mean, we already had a recycling company. We already had a lot of equipment. Um, so that spurred us into the next, you know, I guess segue into our, you know, right. we just pivoted and rebranded as so, Liberty Salvage more. So, so there's a um, principle here for mm -hmm. business that, and I don't think there's any, well, there's probably exceptions, but there's very few entrepreneurs who have not failed as they're getting their feet under themselves and as they're progressing and developing their own success story, their legacy, right? Mm -hmm. Most of them have gone bankrupt at one point. Most of them have lost or been taken advantage of or had the economy crush their business or something. And many of them, many times, I've been through multiple failures and successes in my story and building our company certainty management and our other company certainty global and so it's a it, it's a it's a principle it, one it's a it's an almost an eternal principle it's going to happen right we can't mm -hmm. control everything as much as we try but two the one of the skills and talents for a successful entrepreneur is that ability to pivot and the ability to constantly be reinventing yourself we do it all the time we're constantly improving, trying to get better, learning from our mistakes, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I want to get into our crypto discussion, but give us 60 seconds of what you did with ERC, because I sure. think it's really important. It, it, you, you, you were involved in some pretty big projects with the- uh, Yeah, so, so when ERC, so like I was saying, there was TARP money. And so I got a, uh, we had a uh, Department of Energy hired us to like, you know, because uh, they had this big $300 billion to disseminate, and it was all free money to municipalities only, so like your counties and cities. 
And so what I saw an, a, a great opportunity is to be a consultant, you know, being consulting in where's it, you know, I would call. So I started just calling. That was my sales training again. I was calling all these uh, managers, the city manager or county managers. And I say, hey, just what are you going to do with your energy efficiency block grants? Do you guys know about that? And most of them, they didn't even know that they were going to get free money from the federal government. And of course, they had to apply just like anybody else. And, you know, they don't have a grant writer. So, or or if they did, they didn't know the all the ins and outs, but we did. And so we kind of helped, you know, our cities and municipalities get those free monies and then create more jobs. Um, and then they started doing, and that was in 2008, 9, and 10. Uh, here in Vegas, it's like the solar capital of the world. So there was this big, big, huge um, uh, company that was called Abangoa, a uh, French company, actually, uh, with uh, technology using Spanish technology. And if you go outside off of the 15 freeway here going towards L.A., it's on the California side. And it's called these concentrated solar arrays. And, you know, a lot of companies started popping up, popping up with different technologies of solar and how to do solar different. Um, and so, yeah, I was involved in a lot of the financing part of it because of my banking background and, you know, getting all these institutions together, you know, in partnerships with the city and, of course, in partnerships with the private companies. Um, so but to get it, these off the ground. Yeah, isn't it interesting how our careers evolve? Uh, they kind of manifest themselves and it's never just one path we pick a path and we that's all we do and very rarely are we on very rare. <laughs> one path without these these um offshoots and these different experiences yours yours really evolved from your financial experience and your yep. your desire to educate others and then you were involved in construction and then you you started to, to learn all about green energy even before people were thinking about it, you know. And right. So like my like experience a, from like the bank. Jenga, you know, somebody's building yeah. the blocks of a Jenga uh, tower, and that was your career. Is is that a safe uh, safe comment? Yeah, it was just I kind of and I don't want to say you. Sometimes you just kind of fall into it, but that's kind of rare as well. A lot of time is because of your background and my preparation from being in the banking side than being an entrepreneur and knowing how to run a business and, and dealing with people. And then on top of that, with all my recycling experience, I would in construction as well, it kind of like all those languages, I knew how to talk to each one of that group set. And it was like I became the hub to put the put the deal together, right? Because well, if they they would have done it themselves, they wouldn't even know. They wouldn't even know where to start. Right. Right. And I know we were talking about how it went on so, so you had clients like MGM and and yeah. Um, so like a lot the of the world, casinos. World market and several of the casinos and mm -hmm. and I, I said I mean we were just talking yesterday. You said, Yeah, I can pick up the phone and call so and so who is mm -hmm. completely inaccessible. You've got him on speed dial, right? <laughs> yeah, because well, because you're you know, when you give, right, and without like you know, I, on those, those are big projects and yeah, we, I made money for my time, but being an expert, you know, so when people like, when I talk to, um, the city of Vegas now, right. They like, Oh, Hey, what, what else deal you got for me? Right. What other monies do you have for me? Right. So it's a little different. They treat me a little different, right. Because they, uh, they understand my heart and that I really, I'm there to really help and be an expert. If I don't, you know, and and right. so so well, when you, I you've proven it, it, yourself, right? Yeah. It's not, so it's not, it wasn't lip service. You walked, yeah, and walked, yeah. and didn't just talk the talk. Yeah. So it was not like I was trying to sell them. I was just wanting to really help and say, look, did you look into this? And if they didn't hire me, I was like, okay with it. I was like, okay, at least I I drew their attention to this issue, right? And how they can get money right so nowadays that's how i get clients because i say okay 
I like to hear them and, and say, okay, if you have a problem, you know, maybe I can solve it. Maybe I can't, maybe someone in my network can solve it. And so that gives you, you know, like your network starts to grow that way. And I guess also being, having experience in different realms helps also. So yeah, like I, I had a, a lot of, uh, you know, these clients that like MGM, Las Vegas Convention Center, we did their recycling program for them um uh for the department of energy so it's very eclectic right so you got government yeah. private companies too so well there those are not small uh, contracts those are those are pretty massive clients and you you said a comment earlier tony about how you're a curious person and you're always learning you're always trying to understand things i think you read more than maybe a lot of people do you probably read manuals and read policies and, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and that's what's made you um, such a great educator through Mabel Academy. You're helping teach people because you've taken the time to learn. And now not only are you educated, but you're also, you talk about having a big heart. I, I know you, I know from experience that you want to pay it forward. Right. But you do for free, you know, you're constantly giving back to the community and so forth and so on. And I think that when you're talking about legacy, that is the mark of a true, a truly successful entrepreneur is they're, right. they're, they're giving back. We've got a couple more minutes till our first break. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, leadership. Where, is, do you go, where did it go from here and how did it go from there into Maybell Academy? Sure. Uh, <laughs> so uh, after selling our business and it was in 2018, uh, you know, so, sold our business and I was just really okay, what's next, right? And one of the things that I picked up was, you know, I went back into banking. So I became a loan officer again, just like, you know, so I went back to my roots, what I knew, right? And mm -hmm. um, and because of that, it was a CDFI. It was a nonprofit bank that gave microloans for entrepreneurs. And part of that, uh, you know, I did that for two years and I loved it because, you know, I really went back to really giving back my knowledge to to entrepreneurs and really seeing that glimmer in their eye. Uh, it was really interesting and really, you know, it's just, I guess it's fulfilling to me to see other entrepreneurs grow and have the same mindset of like my, like, you know, thought thinkers, just like me, right? People that that are like me that wants to grow and wants to have something different in their life. Yeah. Well, uh, we're up against our next break, but sure. I know you went to work for the SBDC, the small business development Corporation. Yeah, that was right yeah. after. So then after, cause when COVID happened, of course, and just like 2008, it was, uh, so yeah, I left the bank and then went to SBDC because of COVID. Cause I really saw there was a big, huge wave of need that's going to happen because a lot of you know it's like the experience that i had in 2008 was duplicating right. in 2020. i totally agree 100 percent. i went through it i had a business then a consulting business that got crushed when the economy crashed literally almost overnight we were out of business but um that's it's fascinating. We're going to come back and continue this conversation because I want to leap into how you went from there to Mabel and crypto, and the hour sure. is passing fast. So, thanks for being with us here on Finding Certainty. Looking forward to uh, finishing the conversation here. We'll be right back uh, in just a minute. All clear. We'll be back in two. So, how am I doing? Am I still like, <laughs> <laughs> inter you know, I know you. I, I want to let you funny to me how, too, so. yeah it's funny to me how fast the it's always it's incredible how fast the hour flies by i mean you know we're already into the last 10 minutes i want to talk i want to dig into you and your brain on crypto and we might actually want to do a whole nother episode maybe we do part one part two because crypto itself is its whole is its own topic yeah right? absolutely but the so, uh, I've never had a guest on twice. You'd be the first, but it might be right. <laughs> it might be a uh, an exercise we'd want to consider because 
you know, you're, uh, well, probably, yeah, that's... probably the only advice I have is to, to talk in smaller sound bites so we can get less detail on each topic. We can get into the, into the additional it's... topics, but hey, sure. I'm sure, good. I mean, sure. I'm enjoying it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just, I'm just telling my story. So it's just, yeah, pe people always refer to my show as a, as a stroll down memory lane. I mean, it's things they haven't even thought of for years. And yeah, I haven't thought about this stuff or... in years when you were you talking to me. Anyways, uh, I guess when you segue in, I'm just gonna go ahead and you know, pretty much say that what happened to me in 2008 and pivoting, right? I saw other like in 2020 was helping people pivot in 2020. Yeah. It was a doozy. I mean, it was even worse than 2008, 20, I, I felt. 20 seconds. Yeah, okay. All right, we're coming back. Mm -hmm. You are listening to Finding Certainty with Patrick Lang. Have a question for Patrick or his guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now, back to the show with Patrick. Welcome back to Finding Certainty. We're continuing the conversation with my friend, uh, Tony Salazar. And I've uh, been talking a little bit about your journey, how it's been kind of like building a Jenga tower, right? You've got yeah. construction and recycling, finance, banking, got into the green movement, Yep. did a lot of consulting here in Las Vegas uh, and on some very large projects. But through it all, I see this theme and knowing you, I know this is a big part of it as you've always wanted to pay it forward, give it, you know, give back. And in, in one of the best ways you could do that is take all of that experience and knowledge and share it with others. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing with Mayville Academy, with mentorship. I mean, I know you mentioned it's an acronym, right? Yeah. Mentorship, accounting, banking, insurance, and legal. Did I get it right? Yeah, that's right. All right. So I want to go through your course now. And the more I learn about it, we got to talk about what that looks like. But in sure. fact, let me just... Quick comment, 60 seconds, and then let's talk a little bit about crypto. Maybe we'll do a whole nother show because you are a master at cryptocurrency and blockchain. I mean, we can uh, yeah. start talking about that. And I and I just, it's like a rabbit hole, right? There's a there's a lot to it. But so, you have this ability of breaking it down into simple concepts. And I know you do yeah. that through your academy as well. So, so so yeah through maybell i i teach crypto because it's part of finances right you know it's the new digital money um most people think uh blockchain and crypto is one and the same that's not true blockchain is just like the technology it's the brains inside of the the computer right so the computer has a brain right so what makes crypto work is blockchain technology and blockchain technology is not nothing new it's been around since the 70s um 1970s and most people don't even understand that um yeah we were talking about how money's been digital for decades right we yeah, don't have a bag of gold into the bank we 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 can deposit our check on our phone right that is correct so uh, you know 99.9 .9 of all money or currency actually not money currency is in digital format so um and that's what happens right so through the banking system that we adhere to uh, from day to day right we we log in in our back office and we see the ones and zeros and it's all digitized it's not in physical cash or paper sure. money right uh i mean you can go and if anybody remembers in during 2020 during the pandemic um you know even banks was was you had to make an appointment to even get cash out so right and that was became hard with people and i guess that's my segues like uh i really saw during the pandemic you know everybody was kind of staying at home so I really started because I was working for the SBDC and helping people with their IDA loans and PPP loans and that kind of thing 
for businesses not to get into a screeching halt. And because what happened to me in 2008, I knew I had kind of like the solutions to like get people in the same mindset to pivot, to pivot, to pivot. And, and um, not just, just because of a pandemic's going down, you can actually get creative with your business and kind of pivot to and make money. And some of my, mm-hmm. the ones that I've mentored through, they actually made more money through the pandemic than, than before i know several who who did yeah um, they didn't and just so, freeze uh, and I, I know i'm getting off topic but uh that kind of just segues into the next thing because and that's why i did mabel academy because to for entrepreneurs to when we were doing a lot of zoom calls and really everything was online education and i was you know and i had my youtube channel as well so that you know in other words, I can give information in a very uh, efficient way. And so you know, crypto, I've been involved in crypto since 2013. And it was actually a buddy of mine from college. He said, hey, uh, ever heard of Bitcoin? And Bitcoin was started in 2008. And of course, because I mean, the whole premise of Bitcoin was to because of the 2008 banking crisis right so to get out of that and um if you really think of and it's nothing new i mean digital currency is nothing new like i said i mean since the 80s we were using atm machines and that's all digitized um you know debit cards and credit cards so Mm -hmm. if you really understand how things work in the background uh uh you know, we're we're really using networks to uh, for payment, right? To to push digital money or digital currency and value 100%. through the internet, right? So, uh, Bitcoin was established the same way, but it's just instead of centralized, like me, uh, Visa and Mastercard uh, are very synonymous to Bitcoin. And you're like, what? Wait a minute. Yeah, it's just the only difference is that Visa and Mastercard their networks are centralized. So it's, you know, you have a corporation and you have management and you have a network of computers, you know, every single validator, they're called validators, by the way, the, when you go to the store and you pay with your debit card and you slip in that, in their debit card is the node that that little chip that's in your debit card that's embedded. That's called a node, by the way. And so you put, you do this every single day. Most people do, right? And that's how they pay for stuff. And I mean, even cash is going away very systematically. And so, because for banks, it's very expensive to house cash. I mean, think about it. You got to transport it. You have to secure it. You have to have vaults for it. Um, But if I can have just a digital cash or, you know, currency, it's a lot cheaper. So yeah, that's why down, banks are would, want to pushing that. It would cut down on bank robberies for sure, right? Well, yeah, m- most bank robbers are not, you know, sticking, you know, st- this is a stick up. Most bank robbers are cyber, you know, <laughs> cyber bank robbers. So, um, and because of FDIC, you know, your deposits are secured up to 250000 Now, if you're in a credit union, you're not in the FDIC system. You're in a totally different system, by the way. Um, so question for you, Tony. Uh, you know, again, I think we could do a whole other show on crypto. But before we end here, as mm-hmm. we're coming up on the end of the show, give us a, a quick understanding of how blockchain is changing the world as we know it. And how can we benefit in the process? How can we make sure we don't miss out on this trend because you're a trend watcher. You're yes. good at getting behind trends. Crypto is obviously the future. Mm-hmm. Give us a quick, your, just your, your thoughts on that and how do like we- Like a high level how, macro. Yeah, um, and how does the, the normal layman who's not an expert, how do they capitalize on it? Sure. So think think about it. So everything's getting digitized and we're already seeing that because of the internet, right? So that the foundation is the internet, right? And so we don't use paper a lot of paper anymore right let's think about all the things that we personally use in paper format so paper format is your birth certificate your death certificate your marriage license your driver's license you know your ids your passport your all these are 
paper format IDs, right? Or your mortgage application, your title your, work, your yeah. legal documents, your yeah, even those are getting digitized now too, right? Like you e-signatures, right? You sign documents online now, and it's becoming more and more prevalent. So let's push the envelope because of blockchain technology, and and this is already here now, by the way. Uh, in Louis, in the state of Louisiana, actually, you you have a digital ID. Your driver's license is digital. Uh, they have a wallet, and it's using crypto or blockchain technology. Sorry, not crypto, but blockchain technology to secure your ID. Um, you know, yeah, with when, the, you, when you get pulled over, you're pulling out your phone, not your license and registration. Right? That is correct. Now they will issue you a, a a paper format or whatever plastic format, but really the the state has all your ID through the DMV in a blockchain. <laughs> uh, the state of Utah, um, the state of Utah actually has marriage licenses on the blockchain already, where you can have records of your marriage license digitized and you don't have to carry a paper one. You can have your wallet. Uh, it's like your Apple wallet or in your phone, it's your copy of your marriage license. And, um, you know, other states are already gonna implement birth certificates for that. Um, I know Louisiana did that because of Katrina, because Katrina, a lot of people lost a lot of important documents. And right. so that's the reason why they implemented it because of that, right? And mm -hmm. all the flood, all the floods. Um, well, looking at, you look at blockchain and and AI. You add in, you know, artificial yeah. intelligence as well. It's going to eliminate industries. I mean, it's already, you know, yep. ChatGPT has got every copywriter in the world running scared, right? You've got, right. <laughs> you've got. Uh, title companies, I think, will be going away. Uh, a lot yeah, of we'll it, think about we were it. talking so, about how attorneys and much of the legal is going to go away, where attorneys will just be litigators and they'll be, you know, they'll be doing quality control or whatever. But much of the legwork and the normal jobs that we have are going to become obsolete. Very, yeah, that's correct. Like, for example, I know, like, as a teller, you're not going to see tellers because paper money is going to go away. Right. Um, so why should I, I mean, you're kind of seeing that now you have a lot more, uh, banks that have dispenses, right. Uh, the cash with the machine and it's not a, a physical person counting the money in front of you. Exactly. Um, uh, so like tellers, and then of course we were talking about real estate, like think about that. So I know a lot of government entities are going to start putting your title into, um, you know, blockchain technology. And so now you don't need escrow companies. You don't need title companies because everything's going to be on a dot blockchain where it's just a click of a button. And uh, so that makes it, so you're going to need to understand how this stuff works. And, uh, you know, right. to be, to be more certain about your future, get, you got to understand how crypto works. Well, that's a that's just it, and it, it's becoming more mainstream. More people are starting to get involved and realizing that it's <clears throat> it's here to stay. It's 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 the future. But I think you just hit the nail on the head, and maybe the point we have to end on because we are out of time. But if you're not up to speed on blockchain, if you're not up to speed on crypto, you need to get there, and you need to get there fast. I'm actually going to post a link in the description for the show. Uh, to a company that I work with that I am um, good friends with the founders uh, called Connect. It's uh, They offer a free blockchain academy that uh, you can get on and uh, go through little modules, learn what a NFT is, learn what a node is, learn what uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are. And you actually can earn, uh, you can earn crypto for going through the modules. So uh, you can earn crypto for free. They'll educate you on how to do it. I highly recommend you reach out to Tony and learn through his Mabel Academy. If especially if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to get the crypto. You're also going to get a whole lot more. So, just in closing, Tony, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, how does our how does our, how do our listeners uh, learn sure, more? You can about go them? to our website, Mabel M A B I L Academy dot club, and that's our website. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube. It's uh, freedomtv.info. 
um, or you can even Twitter on Twitter through Mabel Academy or even LinkedIn, Anthony Salazar on LinkedIn, Mabel Academy. Fantastic. Um, so, yeah. Well, I appreciate you being here, my friend. Uh, I, I do think we should do a whole nother episode and talk all about crypto, how to actually capitalize on it. We all want to get rich off it, right? We all want to, <laughs> we all want to have a, uh, the financial benefits and the legacy, sure. but we've been listening or we've been visiting here with Tony Salazar. Thank you for being with us today on Finding Certainty. Watch for the future. We'll probably have him back and continue this conversation. But thanks for being here, my friend. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All clear. Great job today, gentlemen. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Yeah, take care. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. You as well. Take care, bud. Yeah, I know we didn't get into the crypto side, but yeah, uh, too much because I was too much on my story. No, no, it's all good. We can, uh, um, you know, I, what I love about stories like yours, and I've had several entrepreneurs on and a wide variety of guests, but every every entrepreneurial story is a little bit different. You know, we all have our paths and our the the, the, the mistakes we learned from and the lessons we gained and the mentors we, we benefited from and so forth. But but what is interesting to me, the more stories I hear, the more you see these patterns, right? Okay. Every one of them pivoted several times. Every one of them had to overcome failure and discouragement and challenges. Every one of them had to be humble and, and accept input and feedback and have mentors helping them. And you know, every one of us had to um had to surround ourselves with uh, good people. You know, we can't be all things to all people. We have to have experts who are guiding us. That's why I don't do my own taxes and I don't write my own legal briefs and I don't do my own social media, you know? Right. Um, and so there's these, definitely these business principles and I'm sure you would agree with that, right? right? It's a, it's a, um, it's, it's not rocket science. It takes a lot of work, a lot yeah. of blood, sweat and tears, but there is a formula that absolutely works if you follow it. Yeah. And you can increase your likelihood of success and minimize your likelihood of failure. And that's exactly what you teach in, in, in Mabel Academy. Yeah. Most businesses, they, they fail lack of money or lack of knowledge. That's absolutely. why they fail. So. And, and a lack of ice cream is my, my opinion. There's just not enough ice cream. You know, <laughs> most yeah, fun. Absolutely. <laughs> Lack of fun. <laughs> if you're not having fun, why are you lack doing of, it? Lack of balance is really what it comes down to, right? We burn right. ourselves out. But um, anyway, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. But thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, watch the schedule for Mr. Salazar. I haven't, Like I said, you're the first crypto guest I've had. You'll probably be the first guest I have twice because there's lots right. more I want to get into with you. Yeah, there's I don't a know lot anyone, more than said. <laughs> I mean, I don't know anyone who understands blockchain or crypto better than you, but... Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. You'll have to check out the uh, Connect uh, app I was telling you about. It was uh, developed by a friend of mine who's one of the top blockchain traders um, or miners in the country. Mm -hmm. um, made He made billions of dollars, was very involved in Gala Games, uh, which you may have heard oh, of. And I have. Made yeah. billions more from that. He, he owns two jets. I think I know who you're talking about, but go ahead. <laughs> Um, I won't say his name here, but I'll show yeah, it's fine. After, but I, he, uh, I know who you're talking about. So yeah, but this is his next project, and this could yeah. be it could be a project you want to share with people because it's free for them to sign up. They get to educate on you know educate themselves on blockchain, and in the process, they uh, they can get involved. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a great way to do it. Yeah, I've got, I've got somebody uh, blowing leaves outside my window. I, think oh, I can't hear it. Gardener is working. I don't know if you can pick it up. I can hear no, it. No, I can't hear it. That's good. Um, pretty loud. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, in a nutshell, each blockchain is a network. Think think of it as like, a, you know, Bitcoin is like a Visa MasterCard. Uh, the only difference is behind the scenes. Well, think about like the music industry and the music industry, the progression yeah. of things. Bitcoin to me is like the vinyls. Remember the vinyls? Because uh, sure. you can only yeah. you can only write on it. And that's it. You can't. I mean, and then you just play the music. That's Bitcoin. And and Bitcoin also imagine only having twenty two million 
vinyls ever right you know produced so right. and that's what the mining who remember like in the music industry it was the guys that were pressing the vinyls you know that's a miner in essence right 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 you press the new vinyls and so right now there's 19 million bitcoin mined or a little bit more than that but there's only going to be 22 million and the last well, it's scheduled to be mined the last uh, Bitcoin in 2040. So if you know that, and it's pre-programmed to do that, you know, you kind of, now you don't, there's no guesswork. You know what's going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. So anyone, in the Ethereum. Anyone Ethereum who understands that knows that Bitcoin is going to continue to do well. They expect it to get as high as half a million, a million dollars, even per Per coin. Well, the thing is that I think in twenty after twenty forty, th this is just my personal opinion. It's just an opinion. My personal after twenty forty, uh, Bitcoin is going to collapse. Is that right? Interesting. Because oh. there's no incentive for miners. What's the incentive? You can't mine anymore. But between now and then, people are going to make billions. Yep. So, yep, yep. Very interesting. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's let, we'll go ahead and stop the recording, then we can get into sure. the real, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The real uh, conspiracy theories and. Uh, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I like those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for thanks for being here, my friend. I really appreciate it. Sure enough. Don't hang up. I'll talk to you in a minute. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a nice uh, weekend and um, enjoy your uh, spring. Is coming. I mean, weather's getting warmer. California is actually getting rain. Their reservoirs are filling up. I mean, it's yeah. incredible. So that's a good thing. Um, anyway, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. And uh, happy uh, April 1st tomorrow, April Fool's Day. Don't forget. Yep. Take care.